I'm Megan Albers. Welcome to another timeless talk on Lake TV. As most people in the lake area know, the Osage Nation from Oklahoma proposed building a casino and entertainment complex in the lake area in late 2021. Lake TV's William Holtz had the opportunity to sit down with Mike Lira, the Missouri Gaming Chairman, to find out how all of that works. Enjoy this Lake TV timeless talk. But a buy-in and agreement with the governor uh, would probably give the federal government enough appetite to approve this. However, there have been six denials of these types of applications because one of the considerations that the Department of Interior uses, one of the criteria is how far away from your reservation is this? Well, when we look at that, the Osage tribal territory and I'm roughly guessing it's about 150 miles away between Osage and Lake of the Ozarks. There is the Shawnee nation that has a casino right across the Missouri border in Oklahoma. Would they have any opposition or say, uh, I, I think that the distance consideration mainly applies to Osage is not likely to be able to have a casino in Pennsylvania or right. Ohio. Right. Makes sense. But in this case, there could be some resistance or pushback because of that. We don't know. We simply don't know. But these are factors in all of this decision process as it goes forward. Okay, so when you talk about all these hoops and all the things that, you know, no exemption filed for, no request, uh, we're looking at a pretty lengthy time, even if this were to come to fruition. Can you put a ballpark figure on when this could come to fruition or how many months, years, uh, decades we may be looking at until they could be breaking ground on this development? Yeah, so we have done a little back and forth, kind of some brainstorming from within the commission and outside and uh at this stage where we understand it to be without any more information, I, I just can't imagine something like this moving any further along than it is within the next three years. What's more likely, these applications we have heard, some have taken 10 years to be approved. Wow. Uh, so somewhere between there, I think it's, if, if everybody's on board with this and, and it moves fairly smoothly, I would say three to five years before you see this, any type of groundbreaking or even an opening of a casino would be really difficult in the yeah. next three to five years. So Great. Well, and um, that brings me to my next point. You know, we did this local study to find out from our local community here at the lake, what were some of their three concerns or cons if this came to fruition and what were three benefits? And one of the big cons was an increase in crime. And I was going to ask in your work that you guys have done with the other three casinos, is there any proof that a casino does increase the crime rate or things surrounding that area where the casino is at? Because I don't know if that's necessarily factual or a concern that doesn't need to be had? Well, that's a good question. I think yes and no. For example, River City Casino in St. Louis, there was nothing there. There was nothing in that area. It was really a, a, a blighted dead zone of, of, South, of St. Louis County. Uh, so now you have all this economic activity there, a lot of coming and going. And was there some crime? Yes. Just to that area, typical crimes that happen in any business. Does it bring crime to the area? I, I just don't see that. Right. You know, there are some casinos that have far less crime and very little activity from law enforcement or from the highway patrol that's in every casino. Uh, it, it does not seem to attract criminal activity, although there is criminal activity that happens there. And we see those statistics but uh, some are better than others, some are more challenging, but that did not cross my mind as what that the impact of the county or that lake area w would experience. I, that just is not Great. something that crossed my mind. 
And I, and I wanted you to field on that because I felt similar, you know, in a lot of these casinos in Missouri or in bigger cities that have a lot of other activity. And it's hard to gauge right. because the lake is such a unique area. Uh, another thing, and you may not have insight to this and understand how the Osage Nation or other tribes of this work, but a concern here at the lake is we have a huge shortage of qualified workers as well as affordable housing. And there were rumors and reports that sometimes with these complexes, the Osage nation would potentially bring a lot of workforce as well as dedicate a floor or two of this complex for them to live in and that would alleviate some of those concerns can you speak on that or is that something you have no idea about yeah i could speak to that the, the casinos have a lot of challenges in front of them hiring people i i have spoken to them and they would have more gaming operations if they could hire people and, yeah. and it's a problem everywhere it's not unique to the gaming industry but everyone's having challenges hiring but i know by speaking to gms of all of the casinos that they're open for business they would love to hire more people and have more gaming if they were able to hire so would that um would that not be the experience of the osage nation i, I have no idea how would they be able to, I believe that the Osage Nation already has several casinos. So seven are, back are, home are in they, Oklahoma. Yeah. So are they staffed by their members or I, I'm sure that they have to hire outside help too from the general public. So yeah. I think that's a challenge that will work itself out over the coming year or two when the pandemic is further behind us. So Certainly. Uh, I'm not concerned about that part. That was Lake TV's William Holtz chatting with Mike Lira, chairman of the Missouri Gaming Commission, about the possibility of an Indian Nation casino at the lake. Thank you for watching this Lake TV Timeless Talk from the fall of 2021.